Karen. Yes. Um, have you discussed with Mr. Lantos or? The Congressional Human Rights Caucus is uh, very pleased to open this hearing on human rights issues in Yugoslavia by underscoring the purpose of the Congressional Human Rights Caucus, which is a bipartisan activity of the Congress and which has one single objective and that is to diminish and hopefully eventually to eliminate human rights abuses wherever they occur. The Serbian government, acting with substantial support from the national government, is brutally repressing human and political rights in the autonomous province of Kosovo, which is 90% of the population of which is Albanian. We should do it because it is right, and in the long run, it works out the best. But I fear that our State Department and others have worked out or are, in, are embracing a system of trying to be friendly with the Yugoslav government, not wanting to ruffle any feathers, and we're overlooking a very serious human rights problem. It's time for the United States to demand justice in Yugoslavia. No more business as usual in Belgrade. No more business. We want Yugoslavia officials to know that as long as they abuse their own people, they shouldn't expect any support from America. The raging tide of democratization in Eastern Europe makes more salient the issue of human rights and political autonomy for ethnic Albanians in the Kosovo province of Yugoslavia. It gives me great pleasure to call on a distinguished former colleague, a most effective uh, former member of the Executive Committee of the Congressional Human Rights Caucus, uh, who has uh, fought for human rights uh, on many continents and in many different situations, and who has taken uh, such a prominent leadership role on this issue, uh, the Honorable Jody Ogardi. State terrorism is alive and well, maybe not in Moscow, but in Belgrade. And we've got to do something about it. And we've got to send a very, very strong signal. I was forced to go and testify. I wasn't forced to testify, but I was forced to wear a bulletproof vest when I went to Geneva. And again, when I did rallies in front of the United Nations in New York. In Geneva, I went there because Mr. Hadri was shot down because he was ready to deliver to the special rapporteur the 34 names documented. I took those names literally off his body, his wife gave them to me, and I continued that journey under threats, and I had to wear a bulletproof vest. The issue is not terrorism, not certainly Albanian terrorism, because Albanians don't fire back. They've learned to be like Gandhi, to be like Martin Luther King, and literally they demonstrated that today by leaving those halls outside so this meeting could continue, and they traveled from California, Dallas, and all over. And I want to thank those people as well. Is it not true that um, they have a radio station of their own? Do they have that in South Africa? Let me say this. Do they? You, know, you, no you compare the them, Mr. DeGuardi. No. Listen, we can't go with relative justice. We have Mr. to go DeGuardi, with you made is, some very yeah. inflammatory statements here. I did, here. because Mr. Milosevic has been very inflammatory some, against and, and the Albanians, and someone has to speak up against them. And thank God we have the Congress of the United States to stand up for oppressed people, well, including the Coast Guard. Yes, but Mr. DeGuardi, you need to be accurate when you're a witness, especially when you're a paid lobbyist for a group. I'm an now ethnic you Albanian. Have to be I'm accurate. an ethnic Albanian. <laughs> I'm an ethnic Albanian. I'm the president of the Albanian American Civic League and the Albanian American Foundation, and I resent those intonations. Me kete e keni nderuar popullin shqiptar në Kosovë dhe kudo që gjinit në botë. You've shown the respect and, and the honor for the Albanian people wherever they live. Well, there's invitation.
Okay, let me begin by introducing one of our great supporters, and let me say this, it's going to be difficult to say the word great because everyone here is great tonight. And now the United States of America is so lucky to have someone with the background of Tom Lantos. And when you get Tom, to get a net, let's say hello to Tom Lantos! Tonight, Annette and I are telling you that we are deeply grateful for the privilege of being at this historic evening. And if you'll allow us, tonight we feel like Albanians. Freedom and democracy are sweeping the whole of Eastern and Central Europe, and they will not stop at the borders of Kosovo. Friend, Congressman Ben Gilman. Thank you, Joe. It's great being here with all of you, and you're in an important place right across from the White House, and I hope they're all listening, because this is an important cause for you, for us, for all freedom-loving peoples throughout the world. You know, uh, you couldn't have picked a better supporter for your cause than former Congressman Joe Diaguardi. He's still in our minds. Congressman Diaguardi, who stands for all of the important things we all hold so dearly, and that's human rights throughout the world. Thank and you, Joe, may you long continue in that effort. First of all, I'm very honored to be here. And I believe in freedom, and I believe in human rights, and I believe it ought to happen in Kosovo at the earliest possible time. We cannot let uh, people be subject to tyranny anymore, oppression anymore. People are entitled to their freedom. They're entitled to their basic rights. And so I agree with the pride. Free Kosovo and do it now. Stopping. Do you want to stop? No. All right, you can't come with me. Some of you do, but the way you are with me is in your heart, Zemeda, and with your pocket. And you gotta do that by registering today and supporting the Albanian American Civic League. Will everybody become a member of the league today? Yeah. And even if you can't afford $50, give $1. Do something for Kosovo. All right? Yeah. 